It all started in 2009 when a dog named Ruka found a human femur in the West Mesa subdivision of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Soon, 11 women's bodies and one fetus were unearthed, leading to one of the largest crime scene investigations in U.S. history. This is the story. Hello, I am Sean, and if you're new here, then welcome to my channel. If you are returning, then it's great to see you again. Twice a week, I research a true crime that I find interesting to tell you about. I want to make sure that the victims are remembered. There's a lot of victims out there to remember. If you're not subscribed, please do so. It is free. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you want to support me kindly, you can buy me a coffee. There is a link in the description. If you have any ideas for future crimes, please feel free to leave me a message or email me, which is in my description also. Um, I'm going to take the next two weeks off and I'll be returning June 3rd with more true crime. So technically, just this next Friday, Monday and Friday, and then I'll be back. Now, on with today's true crime. Out in the desert of New Mexico, in the West Mesa area of Albuquerque, lies a high desert plateau skirting the Rio Grande Valley. It was home to countless wildlife and Native Americans for tens of thousands of years. People would hike through the area, much like Christina Ross was doing on February 2nd, 2009, with her, da her dog, Ruka. She lived in a subdivision off the area and would often walk here in the mornings. While sniffing along, Ruka came across a scent and started digging up a large bone and brought it to Christine. She was kind of taken back by the size of this bone and took a picture of it. She texted it to her sister who was a nurse her sister quickly texted back saying that that was a human femur bone, and with that, she called the police. They launched a massive effort excavating the entire site, a hundred acres of barren land. Uh, they had been using heavy equipment, hand sifting, and satellite images to look for ground disturbances and figure out where grave locations were. They used the satellite images and it, you know, it, it was an attempt to look down and see where tire tracks possibly were that weren't there on previous images and where possible burial sites were. They figured that all the women had been going missing between 2003 and 2004. In one of the views of the 2004, you can see tire tracks entering the area where the bodies were found. Now was the forensics part of it. They only had bones. There was no clothing, no personal effects. Nothing else was found except for bones. There was a list of missing women from the area. Uh, most of them were sex workers and possibly had drug problems also. Many of them didn't have close relationships with their family, and to figure out a timeline for these victims was tough, but they were going off a list of women that had been reported missing since 2004, or 2000, sorry, 2000. Also, forensics could not determine a cause of death as there was no sign on any of the bones. There was no stab wounds, gunshot wounds, or anything on the bones, so uh, that doesn't really mean that they died peacefully, but they couldn't figure out how the persons, the, the, the women died. Many of the women came from the area of Albuquerque called the war zone. Um, it was just, I don't know, it was described as, um, the ghetto area of Albuquerque. Uh, uh, 
I don't know. You know, there's so many articles that kept referring to these women as sex workers and other words that were used for their vocation. But all in all, they were humans. They were people, mothers, sisters, daughters, friends. Now, I'm going to talk about each one. And unfortunately, there's not much information about any other women. So I was combining different articles to try to piece together some information about the women to give them some sustenance. Um, each article listed the women in different orders and I couldn't find a decent order. So I'm going to list them in the order that they were or disappeared. I thought that would be the best way to keep it chronologically. In May of 2003, 21-year-old Monica Candelaria went missing in southwest Albuquerque near Route 66. After she was reported missing, rumors circulated about her death. I read that her personal struggles in her life, but they never really mentioned what type of struggles or whether it was drugs or sex work. But she did have a heartbreaking loss of a daughter during birth. In her obituary, she was described as a loving daughter, mother, granddaughter, niece, cousin, and friend who will be truly missed. She had one son. In October of 2003, 27-year-old Doreen Marquez was last seen dropping off her child at Calvary Christian Academy. She had two daughters that she spoiled. She also threw them lavish birthday parties. And in high school, she was a cheerleader. But after a boyfriend of hers went to prison, she ended up turning to drugs. And this was to manage the stress that she had of being a single parent. This changed her. She lost her apartment. She moved in with her sister. But because of her drug use, her sister kicked her out and said she had the option to come back as long as she was clean. And she never came back. In early 2004, 26-year-old Victoria Chavez was last seen. Because she had been arrested multiple times for drugs and sex work, her family weren't really concerned when they could not find her at first. But after a whole year of no contact, her mother finally reported her missing March of 2005. So, you know, depending on how early in 2004, it could have been a month and a couple or a year and a couple months. And until her bones were found, they never actually knew what happened. And unfortunately, they still don't know what happened. But at least they know where she is now. She is survived by two children, and I couldn't find much information about her. Every article, I mean, pretty much said the same exact thing I said. And that's that's sad. She, she is a person, and I wish there was more I could find about her. On Valentine's Day, 2004, 27-year-old Veronica Romero was reported missing by her family. She was last seen getting into a white truck at an intersection of Wyoming Boulevard and Central Avenue. Her obituary stated that she had five kids and a huge family who cared about her. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any other information about her. This was all. Three sentences. And I read like five different articles, each one that mentioned pretty much the same three sentences. And I'm sorry, Veronica. Last seen April of 2004, 15 year old Jamie Barella and 25 year old Evelyn Salazar were seen walking toward or walking away from a park at San Mateo and Gibson in Albuquerque. 
they were having a family barbecue there, and the two of them were leaving for a little bit, but they promised that they would return. Neither of them were ever seen again. Evelyn loved life. She loved being a mother. She had only one conviction for sex crime, and she loved going camping and other act outdoor activities. Jamie was not like any of the other victims. She had no drug arrests. She had no sex crimes. She was just, all in all, a normal 15-year-old. She might have ended up on the wrong side, but was never really given a chance to grow up. One source that I read said that Evelyn's disappearance was unrelated to drug use. I'm not sure how they know that, but... And they also said that Jamie was a victim of opportunity, which, if the person was trying to get Evelyn and Jamie was with her, I guess that would be the victim of opportunity. Um... So, yeah, that sucks. In May of 2004, so technically, they're es this, this person was escalating. Because early 2004, then April, now May, and the next one's June. I mean, th this person was escalating fast. So, in May of 2004, Solania Edwards went missing. She was also 15 when she went missing. She was reported a runaway from Lawton, Oklahoma, and was in the care of the Department of Human Services. Her mother had gone to jail when she was five, and she had just been living in the system. Her troubled life landed her in Albuquerque, where she started working as a sex worker. She was survived by her mother, grandmother, and seven other siblings. She was the only African American. All the other victims were Hispanic. Investigators speculated that she was a victim of human trafficking. Being such a young age and working as a sex worker so far away from like her actual home area. In June of 2004, 22-year-old Virginia Cloven was last heard from. She was described as a funny person who loved to do makeup as a child. She grew up in Los Chavez. And when she went to high school, her brother was shot and killed. She ran away a week later, and so did one of her other brothers. In Albuquerque, she was living with her grandfather, then moved in with a boyfriend. Her boyfriend was killed in a tragic accident, and she ended up on the streets. Uh, she tried to reach out to her parents prior to uh, disappearing, but they never got, you know, they never got connected, and then she disappeared. Last seen around July of 2004, 31-year-old Cinnamon Elks was reported missing by her mother after she missed her birthday without contacting anyone. In July, she was arrested and booked into Metropolitan Detention Center and then disappeared soon after that. She had struggles with sex and drug charges, and her mother described her as a person who fell prey to the drugs. Drugs stole everything from us, her mother stated. She had two kids and was an absent mother. Her mother also stated that she heard that a dirty cop was chopping the heads off of these sex workers and burying them in West Mesa. She said this in 2004, years before any of the bodies were found. You know, was she onto something? We may never actually know. The family had, you know, presumptuous thoughts that she was dead, so they actually sent her dental records to the police just in case they ever needed them to uh, identify her remains. It's just sad that they had such hindsight to do something like that. Last seen August of 2004, 23-year-old Julie 
Nieto was reported missing by her family when she didn't come to see her son. She was devoted to her son. Her mother said that she was a great mother and wouldn't let that boy go. But, like so many of the other victims, she had drug issues. It started back when she was 19. She tried to get treatment, but kept going back to them. She was a small lady and would sew her sew or alter her clothing to make them fit. When she was a child, she loved to jump rope. Her obituary said that she was a beautiful, devoted daughter, mother, and beloved friend. Her disappearance devastated all the lives of her loved ones, so much so that two years after her disappearance, her sister and best, best friend both died of drug overdoses. She was the fourth victim to be identified. Drugs just destroy lives. Um, in September of 2004, 22-year-old Gina Michelle Valdez was last seen, but was not reported missing until February of 2005. It was not unusual for her to disappear for weeks or even months at a time. Uh, after she got into drugs, she just disappears. Family really grew concerned when she didn't call her mother for her birthday. She was described as good-hearted, kind woman. They said that she had a big heart and cared deeply for others. She was a great big sister to her siblings. She wanted to get clean, but didn't have the money or insurance to get into a, a program. She had a son and a daughter, and she just wanted to be better for them. When her body was found, she was found with an unborn fetus, and they estimated that she was around four months pregnant. And as I was typing all this stuff up, I, I mean, most of these women, I mean, one was May 2003, then not until October of 2003, then early 2004. Then February of 2004, April, May, June, July, August, and September. I mean, that was every, almost every month in a row that this sick son of a bitch was killing people and putting them on the I don't know. I mean, there was such a difference between the ones in 2003, May of 2003, and then October of 2003. I mean, were there other bodies between those two dates? And then from October till early 2004, were there other bodies during those dates? Uh, I don't know. But Detective Ida Lopez devoted her career to uncover the truth. She wanted to know who was behind the disappearances. She started to work the case in August of 2005. By 2007, she had compiled a file of at least 18 women who disappeared between 2001 and 2006. So we only found 11, or they only found 11, and she has at least 18, if not more, missing people. Could they be out there too? They kept searching but never found anything. So could they be out someplace else besides West Mesa? I don't know. Even after she retired, she continued to work the case. Uh, she still has a list of at least eight women that are missing that might be possibly outside someplace in the desert. Even though it's an unsolved case, there were still a couple people of interest. Joseph Ble, or Blea, Blea, I don't know, was a convicted R wordist from the 80s. His former wife contacted police and 
pointed him as a possible suspect to these West Mesa murders. Um, the police had a number of run-ins with him more than 130 times between 1990 and 2009 in the same area where most of the victims were last seen. Unfortunately, no incriminating evidence could be pinned on him. And even though the police had a search warrant and searched his property and they found a bunch of women's jewelry, underwear, and crime articles, nothing was matched to the victims. He is currently serving 90 years for crimes not related to the West Mesa murders. He reading about him god he, he 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 was a sick piece of shit so i'm glad that he's rotten in prison and i hope he never gets out um yeah all of his poor victims yeah. I mean, there's so many sick sobs out there it's just it, i i I can't fathom it sometimes. The most likely suspect was Lorenza Montoya, who lived within three miles of the West Mesa. Supposedly in 2006, there was a dirt trail leading from his trailer park to the West Mesa. Um, I don't know if that... It never went into it, but I, I don't know if it was from a satellite image or from uh, why they were looking at it. I'm assuming it was a satellite image that they saw. Um, and I know there's just a whole bunch of satellite images, and hopefully if I found it, it should have popped up by now. If not, then I'm just rambling. He also had a history of attacking sex workers. He also threatened to bury his girlfriend out in the desert with lye. So I, I don't know if any of these bodies were found with lye, but if they're that completely decomposed down to bone, I know lye would have done that. Um, I don't know if lye eats bone or not, though. Some of his co-workers stated that he would talk about killing women and burying them in West Mesa. So yeah, th this guy is just seeming like such such the unsub. I mean, he, he definitely sounds like the person that did this. But we will never know if he did or not. In December of 2006, he strangled a teenage sex worker to death in his trailer. Then her boyfriend came in and shot him dead. So that is good. But we'll never know if he did any of the other killings. Coincidentally, the killings or disappearances stopped after his death. So was he, was he the killer and did they finally get him? don't know, but hopefully somebody out there might know something and can at least reveal it. Um, it'd be nice, especially with the other missing women. Uh, it'd be nice to get some closure. In August of 2010, though, there was a connection to Ron Irwin in Joplin, Missouri. Police searched his property and found tens of thousands of photos they were from the state fair in Albuquerque, where he used to visit. It was near the West Mesa and had a number of women in those pictures. I'm assuming they thought that he was stalking them, going out there, killing them, and burying them, and then going back to Joplin. But he has been since cleared as a suspect. Since there was never real solid proof of who the killer is, there's still a reward being offered. And I think it's up to $100,000. Anyone with information can call the 118th Street Task Force 
at 1-877-765-8273 or 505-768-2480. You can also email investigator Ida Lopez at ilopez at cabq.gov. Um, I remember reading a little bit or that some of the women that were compiled that were missing were still alive and I don't know which ones they were. I couldn't find the exact article. They just said that they were alive, but they didn't say who out of the list. So in my pictures that I show of the still missing, if any of them are alive, I'm sorry. Um, but the information I was giving or the information I was given was not telling me everything. In June of 2020, Memorial Park opened in honor of the victims. Um, I know there was some to do uh, bouncing back and forth on how they were going to do it and everything, but they finally did get it open in honor of the victims. There's so many things going on in this case. So much different information that I kept getting. I had to find the similarities so that I can actually tell you about them. Uh, I don't like to give off wrong information. And when I worked in law enforcement, I used to, you know, I always said that you get one victim statement, you get another victim statement. They're going to tell me this stuff. They're going to tell me this stuff. And someplace where they all meet, that's the truth. And that's what I kind of do when I have a whole bunch of information that is different a little bit here and there. I just try to find all the similarities and report that to you because I don't want to give off false stuff. It really, really sucks that I could not find a bunch of things on the women that were killed and very little pictures too. Um, for somebody that likes to try to remember the victims, it really sucks. I want to make sure that they're remembered, but it's hard when there's not much out there. So many women have lost their lives in such a short amount of time. It doesn't matter if they use drugs or if they're sex workers. You know, that was a big thing some of the articles were saying. You know, oh, they're just druggies. They're just sex workers. It doesn't matter. It does matter. They're still human beings. They were daughters, sisters, mothers. They were friends. They mattered. And that's what sometimes people don't understand. You know, just because they were Hispanic or because they were sex workers, they don't matter. No, they, they matter. Everyone matters. So for the other missing women, I hope that they can be found so some of the families can have closure. Uh, I'm really sorry for everyone's loss in this, except for, you know, the bad guy that got shot and killed. Um, He did sound like a POS, so he got, I think, what he probably deserved. But, of course, none of these people get closure then, so that really does suck on that aspect, at least. So, anyhow, I'm bambling. I'm sorry. Thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, please do so. Carry on the conversation in the comments. I enjoy interacting with each and every one of you. Like I said, I won't be here until uh, June 3rd, a new month, starting fresh, going to get some rest and relaxation. So be good to yourself. Be good to others. I love you all. I'll see you in two weeks. Bye.